Hello, I'm Tony Hillerson, author of Programming Sound with Pure Data, published by the Pragmatic Programmers. In this book, I cover Pure Data, an open source visual programming language for creating sound. Most people call Pure Data by its nickname, PD. In fact, if you listen right now to the sound of the waves in the background, you'll hear PD. These are a few examples of sounds built with PD. Waves. Wind. A wine glass. Swords. Weapons. And a rocket ship thruster for an old school game. And now I'd like to give you a brief tour of just a small part of PD's capabilities. First, I'll open up a new file. PD calls these patches. Next, I'll create an oscillator. Oscillators produce a signal, which can become audio. Next, I'll create a DAC. That stands for Digital Analog Converter. This will take the signal from the oscillator and convert it to sound coming out of your sound card. Before we connect these two objects together, we want a way to control the volume. So between them, I'll create a signal multiplier. This will allow us to adjust the volume from the oscillator by a multiplier value. To control the multiplier, I'll use two messages. Notice that these look a little bit different than the objects. I'll connect both of the messages to the right inlet of the multiplier and set 1 to 0.75 for 3 quarters volume and 1 to 0 for 0 volume. Connecting these to the right inlet of the multiplier will allow us to set the multiplier value by pressing the message box, effectively controlling the volume. There's no sound yet, because we need to tell the oscillator what frequency we want it to oscillate at. For this demonstration, I can use another PD object, a number. If we connect the number to the oscillator, and then drag up and down with the mouse, you can hear that the number is sent to the oscillator, controlling its frequency and the oscillator will change tone. And now we can press zero to set the volume back to zero. Now let's look at a slightly more complex example. I'll walk through this patch here. The idea is that we'll have PD automatically control the volume level of the oscillator as we press the message boxes at the top of the patch. Starting at the bottom, we replace the DAC with an output object, which contains a volume control and a toggle for the DSP the global sound processing. Before that in the chain, we have the multiplier as in the last example, and the two messages connected to it set to 0 and 1. These will automatically be triggered instead of manually in the last patch. On the left side of the chain, we have the oscillator, also from the previous example, but to set its frequency, we're going to use an M to F object that turns MIDI note messages into floating point frequency values, which control the oscillator's frequency. MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. It's a spec for digital musical instruments, but in this case we're simply using MIDI note values in the messages here at the top of the patch to convert those notes into frequencies using the M to F object. Instead of the note messages being connected to the M to F, 
we connect them to a trigger object. This trigger takes the message and triggers three separate actions. These actions are specified here as arguments to the trigger object. You can see there are three arguments, float, bang, and bang. Bangs are messages that tell PD objects to do things. When these messages are clicked, they send their values to the trigger. The trigger works from right to left, so it sends a bang message first to the one message box connected to the multiplier, turning the volume up all the way. Next, it sends a message to the delay object, which, when triggered, waits a certain amount of time specified in its argument before sending a bang to the next object, which here is a zero message box. The delay is set to 500, which stands for 500 milliseconds. So when we press a message at the top, it will turn the volume up, and then after 500 milliseconds, turn the volume back down to zero by controlling the multiplier's value. Finally, the MIDI, MIDI note message controlled from the message box at the top is passed through as a floating point value to the M to F object, controlling the frequency of the oscillator. So now as we press the message boxes, triggering the messages at the top of the patch, PD will play a short 500 millisecond long musical note. Let's give it a listen. So there you have a musical performance with pure data. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if we could take a patch created in PD and embed it inside of an application that you've made? Well, that's exactly what we can do with an open source project called libpd. I have here a simple application in iOS with a very similar patch to the one we just saw embedded and using libpd. Here, let me play a little tune. Now, there's much more than simple musical patches that you can do with PD. If you want to learn more, then check out Programming Sound with Peer Data at the Pragmatic Programmer's website. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to Peer Data.